Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Bottom Line Podcast, where we say what we mean, and we mean what we say, because at the core of everything that is, was, and forever will be, there will always be the bottom line. Today's guest is Isagenics international team builder and distributor, Mr. Ivan Johnson. He's uh, focusing on helping people avoid chronic illness. You can find Ivan and um, what he's doing, his movement um, to help people avoid chronic illness at avoidchronicillness.com. Uh, me and Ivan go back um, to uh, real estate, actually selling real estate in Brooklyn. Um, the thing about Ivan, man, that's always been like uh, something that I've always kind of uh, noticed about him is he seems ageless. Ivan, you didn't always have the beard, the goatee. Not when I met you the first time around. You always seemed ageless. I can never really put an age on you, man. So I saw you on, um, I think it was on Facebook, and you were doing a park workout. And I'm like, what? When? How? When did this start happening? Right? So I decided to reach out. And um, this is like the perfect time to talk about what we could do today, especially during COVID, um, about what, what we can do to avoid chronic illness. So thanks for taking the time to do the show, Ivan. How you been, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Well, you're looking, you're looking buff out there, man. What have you been up to? How, I, I usually ask people how COVID has been impacting them, but it doesn't seem like it's really had... Um, that much of a stressor uh, or has been that much of a stressor for you um talk to me how, how have you been dealing with covid yeah i mean everyone around me uh primarily i have a lot of friends who have been you know uh, just putting in requests for um prayer we just know i have a ministry as well and a lot of the prayer requests are relating to people that have covid and people are passing away from covid and when it first hit i also did um because i also was doing executive protection as well security and I did a, a detail for the United Nations uh -huh. and uh, working with the, uh, the first responding nurses and doing COVID testing throughout the tri-state area. And there's been such a fear and a panic with it all that, you know, I guess it kind of rubbed off on me as well, kind of concerned, becoming very uh, uh, concerned about my health. Yep. So I started realizing because, you know, doing real estate, a lot of times I didn't have time. I'm not sure how you were able to fit it in, but I didn't have a lot of time to get my workouts in right. and to focus on that. I was having a lot of chronic fatigue issues. Right. I started having um, digestive issues and brain clarity issues. And then COVID comes along. I said, you know what? This is the wrong time to be dealing with any type of underlying uh, situations. Even though it was very minor, but it seemed to be a start of something potentially serious. And I, I, I couldn't let that go. Yeah. So. Yeah. I said, well, my fitness background, let me get back into my roots, which is fitness, which is exercise. As a personal trainer, also ran collegiately. Also, I said, you know what, let me just get back into that. So I started running and I started working out and I realized that I really didn't have the energy to really complete a lot of the workouts. And yeah. I started strong yeah. and I started feeling like, you know what, this is really tough and challenging. Yeah. And then somebody brought this across my table, speaking about uh, really helping me to understand more about proper nutrition. Yeah. And what proper nutrition, the impact that it has on the body. And then I started doing research on plant-based dieting. So I just did a whole entire, just a paradigm shift. Yeah. Changed over to plant-based diet. After I reached a plateau, my exercising, I said, you know, I need to really find nutritions and supplements that are all natural, that are all healthy, that are tested, that are verified, that I can put into my system mm -hmm. to help my system to recover quicker and to have the strength that my body needs. And sure enough, that's when everything just went to a whole other level, man. My gut health issues was taken care of within a, a week and a half's time. Uh, it was like my, a light bulb came on my brain again. Uh, mental clarity issues. You know, as we are sales guys, in real estate, you have to be very sharp. You have to know the numbers. You have to right. be able to articulate your position very clearly and know exactly where you're going in a conversation. Mm -hmm. And it felt like I was, I was slipping a bit. <laughs> I How about and that? I couldn't let that happen. Right. So sure enough. My brain just came back on. My body is fit. And now the strength, I'm probably just as strong or stronger than I was in, in college. Wow. Which is crazy. Yeah. So that's where it is now. And then now it's like, you know, since it worked for me very well, I said, because we are in a time where everyone is really concerned about health yeah. and everyone is talking about health, I said, let me get into it as a business. So that's pretty much where it started. Gotcha. Gotcha. Even you're full of so many surprises, man. I mean, just talking to you when we first started uh, talking about real estate, I was always um, curious about, you know, what, you know, what got you into real estate? You know what I mean? 
because you were coming into the office, you were on the phones, and you were also in the streets. A lot of guys would just come into the office, they'd be on the phones, but then, you know, they wouldn't really be on the streets as much, right? And I remember you and I, um, we focused a lot on the same areas, like Crown Heights, like uh, Bed-Stuy, and so on. And you were always the kind of guy, you never really talked about real estate. That was the only thing about you. Like, you talked about everything else. You were in the streets, you were, like, mm-hmm. doing showings, you were doing your thing, but you were never, your our conversations were never really centered around property. It was never really centered around, it was more like this is what the community is doing. You always had this like macro view, right? Yeah. And that's, that's what I think um, attracted me to, you know, um, your energy. You know what I mean? The, the overall big picture, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was never so, it was never microscope. It was never um, micro. So that's mm-hmm. something that I think is consistent with you. Um, the other thing I'm wondering is, you know, you did a really good job of hiding your physique and your fitness. And I got a bone to pick with you about that, man. Because <laughs> for, for me, it looks like it just came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, the guy's wearing T-shirts and he's got guns coming out of the T-shirts. And he's like, you know, you've got equipment and all. So I'm like, when did you even, you know, realize that um, you were, I think the mental clarity, you touched on that. But then that plateau, a lot of people are okay. They'd be like, you know what, I, I did something today. I did something fitness related today. Me, I've, you know, I try to squeeze in some push-ups here and there, but I love going to the gym. I love lifting weights, but that does cause like, um, you get your prone to injury, lifting a lot of heavy weights. Sometimes you've got the ego lifters and you've got, sometimes you've got, um, uh, the fact that you, you hit your number, you, you're maintaining your weight, you're maintaining you, what you said is that you realize the plateau in your performance, right? That's right. And it was in that plateau that you wanted to see an increase in your performance. How was uh, your, would you say, your stress levels when it came to, um, to mental clarity, when it came to like your, maybe your cardio, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how, how, was, how did stress play a part in that? I want, I'm trying to figure that out from, um, right. Yeah. That was the part that kind of really changed the whole dynamic of the way I saw a working out and relating to the power of natural nutrients, uh, adaptogens, trace minerals in the system. Mm-hmm. Because once the body is fully hydrated, that thing called lactic acid, which is essentially the Achilles heel to any uh, power lifter, any professional athlete, any sprinter Mm -hmm. is reduced in the system. So once I really found that as the key, it it just changed my whole entire outlook on so many different levels. Right now in my business, I reach out to coaches, I reach out to professional athletes because I do know me running, I almost went professional running track and field. I ran division one track and field for Brevard College. And um, one of the fastest sprinters coming out of New York City. I ran in the ACCs. I also ran the, the, the SEC. I ran a top level track and field against all the big time schools. Nice. But every single sprinter realizes that when you're coming off of that turn in the 200 meter, the final stretch, mm-hmm. the stress starts producing in the body, which is called lactic acid. Yeah, okay. And that burning sensation that takes place, no one, it seems like no one can avoid that. But I found yeah. something that will actually help yeah. the body to reduce the amount of lactic acid production. Well, before we go Man. into that, before we go into mm-hmm. that, because not everybody was, uh, you know, a sprinter or an athlete like you. And I think my experience comes from, you know, talking to people who have that idea, right, of they want to get more fit. They want to be more, you know, in control of their immune system and so on. So they don't have that conditioning that you have, that you tapped into, that reserve that you tapped into. When I'm talking, and I, and I love the fact that you gave, that you identified the stress, right, and what it's called, because now it gives us, it, it understands who the enemy is. Now we mm-hmm. know what the enemy is, and we now we know how to combat that enemy, right? But for how did you feel when you just you know to be a little granular? How did you feel when you started to plateau and you were like, "This mm-hmm. isn't me, this yeah. isn't me." I know I can do more. I know this is not my full potential because a lot of people do the opposite. They're like, "Oh, that's all I can do. I can only do twenty-five push-ups. That's all I'm doing for now," and it's stressful for them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So how did you make that? That how did you pivot? How did you um? get past that breaking point? How did you get past that point? Yeah, first I'll tell you how it made me feel. Yeah. Because I believe that it was to know how I felt in the situation really helped me to get to another place where I wanted to be. Right. And it made me feel very frustrated. It made me feel old. Yeah. It made me feel as though I'm never going to reach my goals because I had set some really, really high goals. I wanted to reach a level of fitness and strength 
that I had when I was in college. Right. Okay. And at 47 years old, we're talking about like 24 years ago. That is right. absolutely in a lot of people's minds that is impossible to accomplish. Yep. So because, of, because I guess I set really high goals, it pushed me past that breaking point and I had to figure it out. So once I really started to do a lot more studying on nutrition, okay, proper dieting, in addition to, you know, this whole plant-based thing, I don't yeah. recommend it for everybody, but for me, it was what helped me, yeah. uh, my body to feel different. So now that plateau that I once had, once I changed my diet, mm -hmm. once I started getting proper nutrition, uh, my body was able to do more. And then now when I wake up in the morning, it used to be, I would say maybe going back even three months ago when I would work out, it would take me two to three days to recover from a hard workout. Right, right, yeah. So now I'm working out like only one, two, two days a week. Yep. It takes me three days to recover from a hard yep. workout. So now what, what I do, I do, uh, I don't do workouts as hard. So I just want to do maintenance now. Okay. Now when I get up, my body has changed so much. Now when I get up, I'm like, look, what type of workout can I do that is the hardest possible workout for me to do? Because I want to challenge my body. I yeah. want to challenge my muscles and see if there's a breakdown in my muscles. I'm trying to break my muscles down, my body down now, yeah. and see how fast I can recover. And it's amazing because the recovery is so fast now. Yeah. What is your recovery time like? Is it like a 48-hour period or like a 72-hour period? Like how long does it take you to recover? Less than 24 hours. All right. So pre pre right it, how long was it then it was like three days maybe two days yes three days right. right let me ask you a question um so there's a lot of other things out there that people take and i don't recommend anything really uh, to anybody but you know when you're in the fitness game when you're around you, the gym and such and guys are you know getting older but they still seem to be pretty fit a lot of people recommend like flaxseed oil or um you know um other things i forget i don't really take them so i don't really know you know what i mean but right um what I'm trying to figure out is what you do, you're not lifting weights. You're using your own body. You're doing functional movements. You're doing a lot of functional movements, right? Um, mm -hmm. how, has, how, has you, how have you seen that that has helped you to, um, to get past your plateau, right? And then to get past that stressful point where you were talking about the lactic acid. How have you seen right. that yeah. functional movements have helped you? Mm -hmm. That's a good question because with the weights, again, you know with the weights, there's a lot of stress on the muscles, there's a lot of stress in the tissues, there's a lot of stress in the joints yeah. when you're doing heavy weight. But when you're doing your own body weight, uh, you can, I believe that you can develop leaner muscle mass yeah. because you really can modify your own body weight. So I can do maybe 15% of my body weight, I can increase to 45% of my body weight and go all the way up to 100% of my body weight. Yep. It's so gradual and it's just so organic that for me, it just feels so much different yep. than doing weights. And again, to each his own. The gyms are closed right now, to be honest. If the right. gyms were open, I'd probably be in the gym as well. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Right. But um, since the gym is closed, this is by default. This is what I have to do. And this is the type of results I've been seeing just by doing the straight calisthenics. Yeah, that's great, man. I, I, my whole foundation is based on calisthenics, right? I always say, if you can't really move your own body weight, don't get in there. My whole thing is like, if I take some time off the gym, right? And let's just say, because I'm, I get busy, right? And at the end of the day, for me, I'm not, I'm not in there for the aesthetics. I'm in there because it's stress relief for me. Yeah, it's an outlet. You know what I mean? So, uh, if I'm not in there and I'm not lifting like I normally lift, I'll go right back to like a three week regimen where I'm just all calisthenics, right? Push ups, pull ups, dips, park workout. I'm going doing cardio. I'm running maybe five miles, ten miles every other day, I'm trying to get myself back where it's at. And then after that three week period, then I'll go in and I'll lift some metal, right? Start really right. lifting. And I got to move something. Like I like to lift heavy. You know what I mean? But like mm -hmm. what um, I noticed with a lot of lifting, there is not a lot of functional movement mm -hmm. when you're lifting unless you're like, uh, you know, doing like a uh, hit, like high intensity interval training, yeah. right? So how have you seen uh, at your age, right, if you are going to just, you know, uh, do more functional exercises, how have you seen that um, your, 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 your blood pressure or your cholesterol or your mental clarity, like how have you seen that to continue to increase? How mm -hmm. have you seen mm -hmm. that? Explain that to, to me so I have a better I, I, understanding. Yeah, with me, it's, it's the combination of – the, the three, right? The proper rest, the proper diet, and then the exercising for me. So as far as measuring exactly what takes place in the workout part of it, yeah. with the cholesterol and things like that, I haven't measured that side of it. 
All right. I just did all of them together into one. Okay. Uh, but I do realize that there has been an increase in energy. Yeah. Uh, I get up earlier now. It doesn't take me as long to get out of the bed and start my day. Yeah. I don't need coffee in the morning anymore. Really? I get up wow. and I'm right up. I'm right up and at it. Nice. And I am looking forward to the next workout, which is something that has been a major change. Because typically, for a lot of people, especially when you start getting up in age, th there's a major pandemic. I always mention things in pandemics because a lot of things that have been around for a very long time, I consider them to also be pandemics. Like obesity is a pandemic to me. Uh -huh. right? uh, chronic fatigue. Uh, but also you have a lot of men that are losing their testosterone. Yep. Yep. Reduced testosterone because of plastics and other uh, things within our food supply. Yep. That's reducing the testosterone count in men, and that's causing depression. Yeah, uh, that's causing men to put on certain certain weight around the gut area. Yeah, and it's also causing underlying illnesses ultimately. So that that whole thing relating to increased testosterone, I believe, is really that's the that's the key for me. Yeah, and yeah. getting up and having the energy and wanting yeah. to go out. So I was mentioning. Typically, when people exercise, a lot of men exercise low testosterone. Yeah, they it's laborsome. It's 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 a burden to get up and have to do a hard workout. Yeah. They're not looking forward to it. I was not looking forward to a workout, bro. It was like, right. oh my goodness, I know I got to work out. Right. I don't want to do it. Let me put it off to tomorrow. Yep. Let me see if I have a little more energy tomorrow. And, yep. and it's like, let me drink some coffee. So now the change for me is going back to the whole thing with the calisthenics and how I see the, the increase. I get up in the morning. As soon as I'm up in the morning, I'm thinking about workout. Yeah. Get that workout in. Yeah. My body is like craving yeah. workouts now. Before, it was like a repellent, like, nope. <laughs> now it was like, where's the next workout? Yeah. And that's something I haven't experienced before. So I'm still, because I'm not a, I'm not a nutritionist, uh, so I'm still trying to identify yeah. why is it that based on me resetting my system, my body's actually craving exercise now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting even to me. I need to look more into that myself. No, that's, time. yeah, I like the self-discovery there, man, because a lot of it is about figuring out what your body needs and what your body's not getting so that you can give your body more of that. It will speak to you. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of listening to your body. I always tell people, listen, and me, myself, I always listen to my body too. Like there's something my body's missing. Um, I tried the whole coffee thing, man, the whole not coffee. I get these headaches and, um, you know, uh, so I just drink water, right? I'll drink water mm -hmm. instead when I get the headaches. But for some reason, I don't know, maybe I'm addicted to caffeine, man. I don't know what it is. I just feel like my day is incomplete if I don't have a cup of coffee. But then let me ask you this too, right? Because I have a really fast metabolism. So oh. I'll eat and then I'll drink coffee like it's good to, for my digestive system. You know what I mean? To mm -hmm. help me digest after I eat. But mm -hmm. You know, at your age, 47 years old, you're saying, I don't wake up in the morning. I don't really need coffee. My body is craving a workout, right? How do you right. sleep at night? Like, do you, like, just crash? Or are you still up and, like, uh, wired? I sleep very easily. I don't have a hard time falling asleep. Uh -huh. um, and I don't feel wired because everything that I take now, there's no stimulants in anything that I take. Everything right. that I take is all natural. It's, it's fruit-based. Even the energy supplement yeah. that we have as a company, the energy is, is uh, coffee. Yeah. It's not going to be from coffee beans. It's caffeine, uh -huh. not from coffee beans. So the caffeine is coming. Caffeine. They just extract the caffeine right out of it. Green tea. We get it from green tea and other herbs. So right. we're getting a different source for our energy. Yeah. Therefore, it's not the crashing effect. It's not the same type of effect people feel um, that they may experience with the coffee. Yeah. And so it's a lot easier for the body to settle down. In addition to that, we also have things to help the body, body settle down. I take things for brain health because another one of my main platforms is going to be proper brain function as well. Yeah. Yeah. So at night, you take something that's called, uh, it, it's like a sleep support. It's herbs. It's all natural. You take it and it helps the body to calm down and get you into proper REM sleep and it actually yeah. releases and gets rid of the plaque that's developing on the brain that starts to develop uh, brain clarity issues, brain function issues, and then dementia later on in life. Yep. And you sleep, and there's a certain part of the brain that resets itself at night. Yeah. It's like it's a switch. It yeah. resets itself, and the yeah. whole body is restored. This is why I'm experiencing the very, very fast recovery. I have a hard workout one day. I wake up next morning. There's no soreness. There's yeah. no pain. That's great. And yeah. That's brilliant. So like another thing too, I think what a lot of dudes, they're like, um, especially in the gym, right? It's like bro science. It's like, um, if you're lifting heavy weight and it's a fact, like I've tried it. Right. And uh -huh. I'm like, yo, this actually makes sense because the mindset, and I, I kind of want to stress this because a lot of people are in it for the aesthetics and it's like, you know, longevity is where we're at right now. 
self-preservation is where we're at right now. I think that needs to be the conversation. You know what I mean? More functional yes. movements and exercises is what's going to keep us, you know, young. You know what I mean? Feeling young, feeling great. So I think um, what I noticed was for me, when I go to the gym, I just, I'll have one day where I don't touch any weights at all, right? And then the next day, it's kind of like I have to earn the weights, right? So mm -hmm. I have one day where I touch no weights. I'll just be on the turf. I'll be pushing the sled and I'll be doing the kettlebells and I'll be like, you know, flipping the tires and the sledgehammers. I'll do everything as functional as possible. And I'm like, all right, now that I'm taxed, tomorrow I'll come in and I'll touch some weight, right? So then mm -hmm. what I noticed is that when I start lifting heavy, um, at the end of my workout, I'm looking for this level of soreness that's like, yeah, I got it in today. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I like that level of soreness. But then I had a guy tell me, don't go for heavy weight, go for a lot of reps. And I used to tell my, and when I was a trainer, I was telling this to a lot of people, but I'm like, yo, I, I like it because it makes me feel like I did something that day. So right. what I, I ended up doing for a while, I want to tell you, maybe it's like a three week period, was I was like touching my, my um, like weights that I know is like for me maintaining. And mm -hmm. then I would just rep out to like 15 to 20 reps, whether it was on the flat, whether it was on the decline, whether it was like on the squats, whatever it was. And I, I was never sore. I wasn't sore. Like I would go that whole 48 hour period and I'm still active. I'm still running around. I feel no soreness. Right. So what I'm wondering is now a guy like you, you're, you're a sprinter, you're a runner. Right. And, um, there must have been a time. The gyms are going to open it back. They're going to open back up soon at like 30% capacity. Cuomo's going to open them back up, right? Mm -hmm. So a guy like you who's doing all of this, you have this like, uh, you know, you're conditioned for what you're doing, functional exercises. How do you decide when is a good time for you to go in the gym and lift some weights? Or when it's a, it's a, is it going to be better for you to go ahead and continue to, you know, do more functional exercises at your age? Like, how do you make that decision? Do you but do that's it? a great, yeah. That's a great question. I like that question. As a, as you know, when I was a personal trainer, I used to uh, tell people it's based on what they're trying to accomplish, what their goals are. Um, for me, I would do weights when yeah. I want to, when I feel like I've reached in my workout a certain stage in which the body is not responding. Okay. So then you need to. I was always taught you need to trick the brain by Shock doing it. different exercises. Yep. Shock it. Yeah doing different exercises or doing different routines so the brain thinks you're doing something differently so your body continues to develop yeah so you can continue to move towards your goal 47 years old right now i'm not trying to do any kind of competitions i just want to be extremely fit right now at my age yeah. but i will tap into the weights for legs though i will uh, do that for legs yeah okay. yeah i will do that for legs and maybe uh maybe shoulders yeah um and then we'll see how it goes. You know, I'm just so fluent, bro. It's like, you know, it's like Bruce Lee talks about, be like water. You, you know like what I'm saying? Water. Like, <laughs> I get up one day, I walk out and say, okay, how do I feel? Right. I got to get some weights. Like you say, I let your body, let the body talk to me, see what the body says, and what the right. body wants to do. And yeah, I just flow yeah. like that. No, I love that. I love that, man. Um, talk to me about isogenics, man. So what I'm wondering, too, is like, okay, so you fully, you're fully transitioning into a plant-based diet now, right? Yes. Okay what why <laughs> like why? <laughs> i haven't been sold on the idea so why why is yes. everybody going plant-based like i'm a i'm a carnivorous i'm just a savage so it's yes, like talk yes. to me. what made you like I, commit to that i was too i was too and i started realizing when i started having gut issues i was really starting to focus more about okay why am i having these gut issues and start looking more into meat itself yeah and then a documentary changed my mind. It's a documentary that I watched uh, that was called What the Health. What the that health? was one documentary. And I started really processing the things that I put in my body, yeah. processing our current food supply and where's the meat coming from. Yeah. And the next documentary was uh, Game Changers. And that's with professional athletes. The strongest man in the world actually is on a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. uh, NFL athletes, they were tracking their progress when they shifted to a plant-based diet. They were tracking their recovery time. They were tra tracking their strength levels, uh, the anaerobic threshold. It was increasing based on a plant-based diet. So now the science behind a plant-based diet is there was a scientist that took the blood and the plasma from an individual that was on a plant-based diet and an individual that was on a, uh, on a meat diet. And he realized that the person that was on a meat diet, the plasma was cloudy. Person on a plant-based diet, it was clear. Then another test was done. 
and this what completely shifted me. <laughs> That's yeah. what I had to see. That's somebody took yeah. somebody took the blood from somebody that was on a plant-based diet, put that blood in a test tube that was filled with cancerous cells, and the cancerous cancerous cells started to over time disappear. Hmm. So I was like, so cancerous, and it makes a lot of sense. Get out of you if you study different plants, like uh, you study turmeric, you study um, also kale, and look at their uh, medicinal properties, you'll find that they, some of them have cancer fighting properties in them. Yeah, well, so I was, mm -hmm. no, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm tracking you right now. I'm listening to what you're saying, but then it gets really down to a point where it's like, how nuanced is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you figure out what plant is used to make your, your protein shake? whatever it mm -hmm. is like are you that like like tell me like because that's what i'm thinking right i'm like first of all i know if i get a certain amount of ch and i'm not eating like red meat every day like a majority right. of my diet is chicken white meat you know what i mean i'm probably eating a lot of chicken i eat a whole chicken like i'll probably eat half of a whole chicken because i'm pacing myself i could definitely kill a whole chicken in one sitting though right mm -hmm. but for me i feel better and my, I'm saying this because I understand, you know, from my training days when I was a personal trainer before I got into real estate, um, you're supposed to have at least one gram of protein per pound. You know what I'm saying? So one way that I knew that if I was not eating, if I wasn't drinking a protein shake, I knew I was, there was a protein deficiency in my diet. So right. if I was getting it from beans, if I was getting it from chicken, I should still be able to have not a real a meal replacement, but I should have a protein shake in between the meals to right. make sure that I was hitting, you know, uh, grams per pound. You know what I mean? So now mm -hmm. I'm like super, I'm like, what? Now you just made it more difficult because now I've got to go research the plants. I got to find out what these plants are, <laughs> you know, where they've been grown, how they've been grown, you know, what the soil was like. Did they use horse manure? You know what I mean? Like, how do you know what plant was used to make your, you see, you see I'm going with this? Absolutely. Oh, you know what? It's overwhelming. I'm like, how do you even make that decision? You know what? This, this is simplified it for me when I found Isogenics, because okay. Isogenics has scientists behind them. They have uh, scientists that work with Olympic athletes, scientists right. that work with professional athletes in the NFL, uh, scientists that have been around for many, many years, looking for different type of formulations, looking for the, the most potent type of protein, plant-based protein, which is right. going to be pea protein. It's going to be all the type of beans as well. Right. So we use different three types of beans for our protein sources and our protein shake. Yeah. And it will also have a way as well. So it, 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 as far as, and the myth has really been, because yeah. I've, I've brought into that for many, many years also, you need meat in your diet. And believe me, I'm not one that's an advocate for saying you shouldn't eat meat, you shouldn't eat meat. I don't go there because um, that's just not the type of journey I'm on, right? right. This is just a personal decision for me sure, and sure. what helped my body get to a place where I feel a lot stronger, yeah. right? So when it comes down to that, uh, Isogenics has the shakes that have, uh, I think it's 20, 25 grams of protein, has just enough protein in it, and also has something, uh, has trace minerals, adaptogens, but most importantly, it has something called Vitamers. And this is a new development. Vitamers. A lot of people haven't heard, yes, Vitamers. A lot of people haven't heard what the term Vitamers are. Yeah, yeah. Now, ju just like we have whole food, there's also something that is considered to be whole vitamins. Okay. So now when we go to like a GNC, you go to a regular store, you get like a B, a B6. It's just one form, one component of that B. You got to get the complex. But the complex, you have B6 and 12 is different. Right. Vitamins are a little different. So now when it comes to B6, there are six different versions of B6 and it's all found within our, our green vegetables. Hmm. So what they have done in their shakes, they've gotten vitamins from sweet potato, from kale, from broccoli, from different types of mushrooms, and extracted those vitamins, which is the whole vitamin, and put it directly into the protein. Wow. Shakes. So not only are we getting these, these, these powerful, powerful nutrients, we're also getting very, very powerful, um, pure forms of protein. So it's just really helping my body get exactly what it needs. So as far as uh, being protein uh, deficient, we know exactly based on the science that we have provided for us, we know exactly what we need for our bodies to make sure our bodies are op operating optimally, yeah. and getting the right type of protein source. Another thing I want to mention, which is a lot of people, when they, I heard this, brother, I was like, wow, this is very powerful. So a lot of people say, well, we need animals, we need animal protein, we need animal protein, we need animal protein, right? So somebody made a statement, I believe it was in the What the Health documentary. He said, okay, where do the animals get their protein from? 
Yeah, I hate that argument because you can't. <laughs> the biggest animals on the planet are eating grass, right? Like the biggest ones, like cows and horses. It's like, all right, yeah. Yeah, got it. But you know what? I'm not that. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, that's a valid argument. I, I can never, I never got a rebuttal for that one. I yeah. Just, it is what it is, right? But at the end of the day, the lion eats those animals for breakfast. Like, so. That's right. I go right back and then, to savagery. And, <laughs> and then the other argument for lions, the lions have a different digestive system than we have. That's right. They have stronger acid in the system. So they're able to digest it a lot differently than we can digest it. Yeah, yeah. So and our digestive big, tract is really long. Hmm? That's a big problem, digesting itself, right? Especially with the meat. It's like, I think you should have a colonoscopy at least once or two, uh, once a year or once every two years or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Because it, we're not meant to process that kind of red meat, especially steak. It takes like three days to digest it, right? That's right. Yeah, That's it's, right. it's like, I know the reasons like pork I should not be eating, but I'm like, oh my gosh. So I don't buy it. Like I don't buy bacon. I don't buy pork. If I'm somewhere and it's there, it's like the temptation is calling. But I still try to, you know, practice. Like I don't eat pork. I try not to eat pork unless it's yeah. like glee or like Haitian pork. It's like oh. Yeah. Anyways, um, I can go on and on about that because it's like it's hard, my man. It's really hard. Like I was telling you yesterday, it's like um, let me hit my forties and then I'll try to make that transition if I feel like it's necessary. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So twenty five grams of protein. How much do you weigh now? Right now, we're 197. Yeah, lean though, right? Like 197 yep. lean, right? You're a lean 197. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Are you still applying that same formula, the, um, the grams per pound with the isogenics or no? No. I mean, I, I throw, I throw uh, almond butter, I think peanut butter my shakes. I mean, I, I do shakes with meals. So nah, I mean, yeah. I consume a lot of calories in my diet. Okay, that's the, my next question for you. We only covered the protein side of it, right? So where are you getting your energy? Because it's like you're, you don't seem like you're, you know, heavy or big on carbs, right? So mm -hmm. how do you replace the carbs, right? I'm a big, you know, Haitian people, we eat a lot of rice and beans, a lot of mm -hmm. starch. We have a starchy diets, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of rice, a lot of, um, a lot of like pastas, you know what I mean? How do you, what do you do for carbs? Well, carbs, I mean, once the body gets the proper nutrition, so adaptogens, ashwagandha, and uh, other types of very, very uh, wolfberry, other types of adaptogens and herbs, when you get them in the system, it gives the body the nutrients that it needs. Therefore, those cravings, those temptations that I used to have, and a lot of people have the temptations for junk food and empty calories, it actually begins to disappear over for time and then I start looking at different things in the stores like I would never put that in my body right now right. never so right. but it happened had to happen over time because I used to have a major battle with sweets yeah and I always had to have I had a haagen crave and that's how I started getting the gut and <laughs> every night eating haagen right and then it's like I realized that it's because the body doesn't have the proper nutrients in it yeah the proper uh adaptogens which is very important adaptogens actually help the body regulate stress uh-huh so ashwagandha operates like a, uh, a traffic cop. What is, that? Avenue, what is that? What is that? Ashwagandha? ashwagandha is a very, very, very powerful essential herb. Okay. And how it works is like a traffic cop. If you're driving on Atlantic Avenue, Atlantic Avenue is completely shut down with traffic. A traffic cop's going to say, hey, you, I want you to go down this street here. Uh, that's what ashwagandha does in the system. It helps the body to regulate stress. It also eliminates stress in a lot of cases. It also helps with brain focus and clarity yeah. so the formulation of different adaptogens and trace minerals has really just turned the system on and when the body is turned on and then of course i, I eat i eat um whole grain rice and i'll eat uh rice pasta okay so i still get my pasta i still get the rice i still yeah. get different things there but for me the, sh the power of what i'm doing yeah is my shakes have everything that it actually needs. The shakes are not really considered shakes. They're actual meal replacements. They have everything uh -huh. the body needs. And I've never gotten this type of nutrients in my body ever before. Got it. And this is why I'm experiencing the change that I'm experiencing. Love it, love it. You can, I can see it in your workouts too. Like you don't seem to be struggling. Your body's not shaking. You seem just strong and you're taking your time. Like, so it shows that you can actually handle the pressure. Your body can handle the pressure that you're putting it through, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing I'm wondering, okay, so... You've gotten the protein down pack. You figured out how to, um, you, you, you eat healthy carbs. Um, now, when it comes to your, because stress produces cortisol levels, mm -hmm. right? So those cortisol levels show themselves like in the love handles and the gut start coming in, 
right? Mm -hmm. So because you're super aware of that, right? Um, at your age, isn't it harder? And uh, not only at your age, but I'm just saying like for a lot of people who, you know, are, you know, on the go, they're always moving around. They got to go to work. They're in the office. They got to work late hours. They, they don't really have that time, you know, to meal prep. They just got to kind of eat and go. What happens yeah. is that the cortisol level starts to increase and then you start getting that gut, right? So a lot of our health is in our gut, right? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about that. What are some things that, you know, people who are more, you know, busy and they got a lot, they're not as health conscious as you are, some basic steps they can take, you know, to check their gut health, so to speak. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, it's, it's going to be very challenging if they really, if they're on a the go, if they're sitting down a lot in their job. Yeah. If you're not moving around a lot, it's going to be very, very challenging. Yeah. And then with the stress, you're not taking anything to help regulate the stresses in the body. They're going to start producing, and if they're not exercising on a regular basis, they're not getting a proper rest, right. um, and they don't have proper nutrients in their body. That's the key, brother. The proper nutrients, organic nutrients, yeah. trace minerals, adaptogens in the system is what really helps the body to avoid things. In the, now, getting rid of what they currently have is yeah. going to take, you know, as a trainer, it's going to take ex exercise. Yeah. It's going to take, change the diet. It's going to take some hacks that um, I've learned in the past from a lot of people that are in the fitness space where wake up in the morning, instead of taking a, a hot shower, take a cold shower. You know, <laughs> get up in the morning, first thing in the morning, yeah. and j j jump in an elliptical, run around in place, do yeah. something for 20 minutes. As soon as you get up in the morning, right. and this here, before you eat anything at all, yeah. and these things will begin to help the body to start itself. The body starts in motion. It, it jumps in, the jump starts the... Uh, what is it called? The metabolism. Yep. You start burning fat that way. Yeah. But again, it goes back to diet and rest. It all diet, and yeah. Stress operating in a body. It's it's, it's difficult, man. It's yeah. very in a water supply. It, it, I mean, brother, it's like water supply. Yeah. The juices that you drink, the sugary foods that you have, processed food. Yeah. A lot of people can do all the work I don't want to do. They're still eating processed foods. They still right. may have a battle with certain areas in their, in their health and you're getting rid of certain fat in your body as well. Yeah. How often are you drinking the shakes or the meal replacement? Like how many meal replacements are you taking? Every day. Every single day. Is yes. Every day. day. Once a day, twice a I day. Do, right? I do. When I first started, I started off three times a day because I really, really, really wanted to get this nutrients that I've never, ever received before in my body in my system and let it start building up. I want to start building up, build up my immunity, build up these, these, these adaptogens and these nutrients in my system. And then I kind of reduced it down to like maybe uh, in the morning. because I realized that I can't do breakfast anymore for whatever reason. When I eat breakfast, I need to go back to sleep. Hmm. No matter what breakfast I tried. I tried the pancakes. I tried the, uh, the, 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 the hot cereal. I tried the cold cereal. And everything makes me want to go right back to sleep. So I really? said, you know, let me do a shake. Hmm. So I do the shakes first thing in the morning. And other things as well as I do uh, like uh, ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. or ashwagandha blend in the morning. Take that there. Also get other supplements in the morning. My body started. Then I do a shake. Nice. And then maybe I may have a, a nice, reasonable uh, lunch. Nice. Some rice cakes, um, some almond butter, uh, or I may do a nice sandwich. Uh, I started doing my own plant-based food. I, I just made my first burger uh, yesterday. Wow. My first burger from scratch. I used to get yeah. on Beyond, Beyond Meat. Yeah, yeah. And I started doing research on Beyond Meat, and I kind of got a little, you know, I need to do a little more, more research on that. And uh, so I made my own for the first time and it tasted so good. And I said, like, I can live like this. I can do this. I can make yeah. my own meat based on using different variations of different beans yeah. and different vegetables, hmm. put a little meat seasoning on top of it. And I can't tell the difference. My brain is like, oh, wow, you're having like chicken right now. It's like, <laughs> you can't yeah. tell the difference. Like but yeah, the shakes, mm -hmm. the shakes I do uh, twice per day, three times per day, twice per day. I may even do one right before bed because it is low in sugar. And it has high nutrients, so it doesn't really stop you from sleeping. It doesn't stop your digestive system from working. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is you did a whole lifestyle change, man. Like, there's, you did a whole lifestyle change, and you probably bought yourself, like, an extra 50 years or something. You know what I mean? I think wow. about the eagle. You know what I mean? When you lead, I, I love the eagle. That's, like, my spirit animal. You know what I mean? This, that mm -hmm. eagle, it lives to be about 40 years old, Right. And um, at 40 years old, you know, it eats everything fresh. So like the plant-based diet has similar foundational work um, where the eagle eats everything fresh. They don't eat anything dead. So when they go hunting, they, they eat fresh uh, live uh, prey, right? 
and they live mm-hmm. to be about 40. Once they hit 40, they go into this, uh, this stage where they have to, um, they get to decide whether or not they want to live or they want to die, right? What happens is their, um, their talons start falling off and their, um, their feathers get stuck together and um, they're, they, they do this, this last flight where they go up to where they were born and um, they stay there and they kind of recover, right? They, let the ta- they pluck out their talons, they pluck out their feathers, and then finally they bang their beaks against the wall, against the mountain, until the beak mm-hmm. falls off. And then mm-hmm. when the beak falls off, what, it, what, what happens is they grow new talons, they grow new feathers, and they, um, they grow a new beak. And um, they call it the flight of rebirth. Once all that happens, wow. they gain another 30 years. They live another wow. 30 years and they come right out of that, you know, that mountaintop and they just, they go back again to go hunting and they, they buy themselves. But it's an, I'm saying that because that decision for you to make at a, you know, at a, at a pivotal age, I want to say, where you start to feel that blood pressure, you start to feel the, the lack of mental acuity, you start to feel there's a decision you have to start to make, right? And you have to say, okay, I want better for myself. I know I can do better for myself what do I have to do? And that's what you did essentially is like you changed your whole lifestyle so that you can go into this, this new, this new rebirth. Right. And mm-hmm. this new person that I see on Facebook now doing freaking workouts in the park that I never knew was like getting down like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's amazing. It's amazing. So I, I, you know, I applaud you for that. Um, so, and it's, it inspires me too, man. Cause like I said, you got me beat by like 10 years. So I see you doing it and I'm like, Oh, okay. So I'm gonna have to keep up with that guy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? At some point. And he might be, you know, doing things that he's, he sees a reason to do. It's not about how it looks. There's a reason behind it, right? There's foundational work that needs to be done. Um, so thanks for doing that and inspiring people. You know what I mean? Because it inspires me, right? Um, there's also a business side of it, though, right? There's, um, you're, making a, you're making a lifestyle change, but then you're also able to make a living, right? with isogenics. Talk to me about that a little bit. How does that work exactly? Yeah, that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very important for me, first and foremost for any business. And, you know, we spoke about this before um, that essentially you have to be a product of the product. People have to see you and see you having a level of success before they even entertain anything that you're saying. Right. So first and foremost, I had to get my health straight before I start having a conversation with anybody on the business side about health, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't be 50 pounds overweight trying to talk to you about, you know, right. health and yeah. products. So when, again, once my body had these results so quickly, and I started realizing that the conversation that we're having today and what everyone is having, there's a great fear about people contracting this COVID-19. Yeah, And I believe that, if you get rid of the underlying illnesses, then you'll be in, in a best position to be able to fight it off if you do contract it. And as we mentioned before in real estate, conversation in real estate, um, back, I would say 2016 and yeah. 2012, everyone wanted to talk about real estate, especially in New York City. Right. So identifying trends was very important to me. I got into real estate because everyone was talking about it. It is an easy conversation to have with many people. Right. And now fitness and health is an easy conversation, because everyone wants to know about how do I not die from catch, con- contracting COVID-19? Right. How do I get rid of this, this underlying issues? So the business side of it, it's something, uh, I mean, the health and wellness space is a very, very broad space as everyone does know, but me personally in this business, as I uh, made a decision, I look at three principles in business, uh, the people, product, and process. They have to be in place. So for me, the products have to be 100% natural. There could not be any type of issues where anything that was processed in it that would be harmful to anyone. So I had to do that first. That was check one. The check two, who are the people behind it? Who are the people running it? What is their history? What is their background? What is their level of success? I did a lot of research on that. I found out that the owners are very successful in business and also in the multi-level marketing, network marketing, distributing space as well. So that was the next check. And the process. Uh, the process is very, very thorough. I mean, my clients are able to receive their product within two to five business days. If there's ever an issue, they would ship out for free in some cases based on the situation. So I said, well, wow, people, product, process, the, all three is a great foundation for me to build on top of this platform. Just like in real estate, we, we either work for 
Corcoran, Douglas Elliman, Keller right. Williams, because those are good platforms, right, right. essentially. Right. The same thing here. I just chose the best platform that I can identify um, to operate in my e existing business. Yeah. So I leveraged their platform and now branded myself in the health space to be able to help other individuals, first and foremost, those three main pandemics, obesity, chronic fatigue, and mental function, mental yeah. health, right. healthy aging, and I'm able to help people with those three major problems. Yeah. So, and it's very, very lucrative, to be honest. It's a very lucrative uh, conversation structure. Um, it's probably one of the highest paying companies in this space in the industry right now. And um, I've also believed being part of a, a very powerful team. My business partners are very, very successful. They've been doing it a very long time. And they're doing very well financially. Yeah. And many people's lives are being saved. Many people are recovering health. And it's just a check, check, check all around. Yeah. So product, people, process, three key things that you look for, right? right? This is not your first right. rodeo though, right? You also, you're a parallel part entrepreneur even. Like you also get in, you're selling real estate. Then you got into Bitcoin, right? Real estate mm -hmm. opened up the door somehow into Bitcoin, right? And then um, you got into this. So it's like, you're very consistent in what you're saying. Like, you know, you gotta be part of the current narrative. You gotta figure out what's going on, what people are talking about, and then figure out how, it's, if it's gonna help people, or if it's not gonna help people. If it is gonna help people, you wanna look at those three Ps, right? Product, That's the, people, yep. the process, right? Um, mm -hmm. you, you, uh, you know, I introduced you as an international team builder. So you have an international reach, it sounds like, right? That's correct. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about that. How does that work? Like, uh, how do you get to people on that level, on an international level? So I reach out to, I mean, I use LinkedIn as my, as my platform for reaching yeah. out to individuals. LinkedIn is very, very great. It's low cost. Yeah. Uh, it's essentially, it's free unless you, you want to probably want to upgrade to the, the premium yeah. uh, package to LinkedIn. But essentially, you can reach out to anyone, anywhere in the world just by putting in a keyword. Yeah. So you can reach out to personal trainers, put in personal trainer. It's a keyword. Yeah and then check your location. Yeah, You can choose tri-state area in New York City, you can choose the UK, you can choose anywhere in the world. And everyone that has that title within their description, yeah. they're gonna come up. They pop right up. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a whole script, I reach out to them, I contact them, I, I see if they, they, they wanna build a relationship. And I love LinkedIn over Facebook, because LinkedIn, people are just about business. Right. They know once you reach out to them, if they wanna connect to see if you have something that could be uh, uh, well, mutually yeah. beneficial. Yeah. And if it is, they'll connect. If it's not, they'll say, hey, great. Nice networking with you, but I'm going to move on to something else, but I'll yeah. keep you in mind. So yeah. I like it. It's really quick. It's, I call it the, uh, it, it, it's the adult version of social media, right? It's for adults, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no kids there, no junk stuff. So yeah. yes, that's what I do. And I've been reaching out and reaching out to personal trainers. I'm reaching out to people that are in, that are entrepreneurs in UK right now. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll transition over to uh, Asia. And now transition over to us uh, South America. Yeah, outstanding, man. So the other thing I'm wondering too, right? Uh, what you're doing there's a distributing side of it, also, right? So how does that work? Like if somebody wanted to get started and they pretty much wanted to follow your process, so they mm -hmm. follow your process down to the letter, literally to the letter. So the PPP, right? People, mm -hmm. product, people, process, right? Mm -hmm. um, use social media so that you can start to you know network and gain relationships that are going to be mutually beneficial. But then there's a distributing side of it also. So how do you break that down for somebody? My distributing side is, is, is essentially handled by the company. It's kind of like how Shopify works, right? You can have use Shopify platforms to distribute your goods. You can choose uh, drop shippers that can be existing within this, the, essentially the platform. So with my platform, all that stuff is already taken care of. Once I uh, identify a client or identify someone that wants to do it as a business, they will come on board as a business or an associate. Um, they complete the agreement to become a distributor. And once they become a distributor, if they identify someone that is interested in the product, we do presentations just oh. like a Zoom. Zoom yeah. presentation. Uh, we let people know, essentially, I do it from a, I would say, a, a consultative perspective. Try to identify what the issues are, whether they have health concerns, do they have any allergies. Just go through the full spectrum of that and then identify which package. We have weight loss packages, we have performance-based packages for professional athletes and even individuals aspiring to go to the next level collegiately. And we identify what works best for them. Once they choose that on the website, it's very succinct. They choose whatever package it is, they set up, they put in the address information and the company takes over from there. Ships it directly to them. Now I can track everything that's taking place, 
when they receive their product, once they receive their product, I'm going to go through another, uh, I'm going to do a, a, a box opening for them. I'm going to go over the products, let them know how to take it and keep touch with them. Right. As we do in real estate as well, we have the, um, touch points. We have the 30, we have the 30 touch, right? We have email campaigns, make sure people are well-informed, know what they have, track their progress, see how they're developing and just be that counselor there as well. Uh, help them be that coach there as well, just to make sure they're getting the results that they signed up for. Right. And that's important. Customer service is key in any business. And this is why we do so well, because we're very passionate about health and we're helping other individuals understand about health and get their results. That's the most important part. Outstanding. So it's a completely virtual business at this point, right? Like it's all virtual. 100%. It's not about storing. I don't have to store a bunch of uh, products, everything. They get everything from the website, shipped out to them directly from our headquarters in um, Arizona. Yeah. And um, so not only are you taking care of yourself and maintaining your health, right? You also have an, e, uh, an online e-commerce business that's generating revenue for you in addition to your other revenue streams, right? So um, talk to me about the commission structure now. Like how do people make money doing this exactly? Like how is it structured? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I would say like the, like the conventional uh, wholesale retail side, right? So you can retail a product if you want. I'm not into it to do a retail. I'm not retailing anything. I'm looking for individuals that even want to be business partners or want to be customers, sign them up as a preferred customer. So they get a discount on the products. And when they order the products, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, calculated as business volume. Business volume is something that continues to accumulate within my organization. I can look at it and see all the business volume I have, all the sales that are being generated with my whole entire organization and my whole entire team. Right. It's going to be in my whole entire organizational team around the world. Right. All that business volume is going to calculate to about 6%. I get about 6% off the, the complete business volume that is built in my organization. Yeah. That's one way. Another way is called cycle bonuses. So a cycle bonus is when you have 600 business volume on one leg, they have 300 business volume on another lake, which uh, 300 business volume is going to be maybe close to about maybe $350 worth for purchasing. It triggers a cycle bonus. So it's like $54 per that. You have individuals that are making five figures based on that side of the compensation plan alone. Hmm. Then you have ranking bonuses as well. And you have, uh, when somebody gets an initial product, um, this, uh, there's a commission that's associated with that, $25, $100, $200, but where the big money is, is going to be in over time, as your organization continues to grow, it's just like any other e-commerce business. If you have subscribers, for example, that are paying a, a, a monthly subscription to your service, right. in our terminology, we use it as auto ship. People are getting something every single month that's constantly building business volume and I'm constantly getting it paid off of just an initial introduction to the products and services. And the key is customer service because they right. love it. They're going to stay on the product. If they're getting good results, that's the yep. thing about, I told you about product. If they're getting good results, they're going to stay with it. Right. So it's a, it's a sustainable business. Yeah. And um, I mean, we have people that are making significant income. And I've replaced the income that I was actually generating on um, one of the other jobs that I was actually working. I replace that income, which yeah. feels really good. That's you know? great. It's a good feeling. It's a great feeling at this time to really reinvent yourself and to be able to do something where you don't have to worry about having to go out uh, to work, but you can do something from home and still yeah. develop the same amount of income that you yeah. were uh, getting when you were working out in a nine to five. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful thing. The coaching business has worked out for me that way too. Um, the, the plan was for it to be completely virtualized. And, um, you know, because of COVID, I got to that, I'm at that stage now. Um, but I like the fact that, uh, look, what you found was a way for you to do more of what makes you tick. To me, that's what, you know, is, um, that's what makes people stay in the business they're in, right? They're not doing it because they're just looking to make some money or to be transactional. It's because it's an extension of who they are, right? right. And so you're able to stand behind your product because you did your research. You're able to deliver a service um, across the world at this point, right? And you're able to spend time, you know, living life on your terms, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's why a lot of us got into real estate to begin with, because we wanted to live life on our terms and we wanted right. to make sure that we were in control of our finances, of our income, right? The fact that that's you right. can add years onto your life, doing what you're doing is amazing. That's amazing. And right now, a lot of people need work. My question for you is, so 
Trump recently um, signed an order where the unemployment uh, is going to continue. And I think they're doing it for like an additional 400 bucks. But the timeline isn't clear, right? The timeline isn't clear. So a lot of people right now are kind of stuck. I'm dealing with this, you know, with clients I'm talking to who are like, you know, they were out of work and I was helping them get a promotion in their job and they're stuck where they are right now. They don't, they don't have a job, whatever it is. They're trying to build their side hustles. They're living off of um, unemployment. This is a reality we're dealing with. This is what it is, right? And so yeah. I'm saying to people, you know, what else can you do? right? What, what can you some, find a way to monetize your knowledge? Can you find a way to do online workshops? Can you find a way to start your side hustle, right? So this is something perfect that, you know, a lot of people could start doing. What does it look like time-wise, time frame wise Like how, how, does, how long does it take to get paid? We can get paid daily, weekly, monthly. Now, every single week I get a paycheck from this company, but you also can get paid daily based on someone that is introduced to one of the packages. Someone wants to do a 30-day system. Yeah. A 30-day cleanse system, a weight loss system. Uh, you get paid essentially the next day once that commission okay. clears. So, um, yeah. Anyone, I mean, I'm not sure you heard of uh, the book Robert Kiyosaki wrote called The Business of the 21st Century. Okay. It speaks exactly about um, leveraging time and other people's efforts. Um, Ray Kroc, I believe, mentioned that is a lot. He would rather get 1% uh, of 100 people's efforts than 100% of his own effort. Yeah. Because of that one percent turns to two, three, four, five percent. Reading some really good increasing. books, my man. You're reading some good yeah. books. We're gonna have to talk about books. In a minute. <laughs> talking about some That's heavy right. hitters right now. Ray yes. Kroc is a heavy hitter. Tell me about the Kiyosaki one, because I don't know that one. I thought you were gonna yeah. go to a Rich Dad Poor Dad or something else. What was the re can you repeat that? Business one? Business of the Twenty First Century. Okay. He talks about why it's important. He was speaking about uh, uh a collapse, a financial collapse. He was speaking about a time in which, and it's very prophetic because right now what we're experiencing is what he was speaking about back then sure. um, when we had the uh, economy collapsing back then. Yeah. But he's mentioning that people really have to identify other ways to develop income. They have to do it independently and they have to do it by leveraging time and other people's efforts. That's it. That's exactly and it. And this is what the industry that I have been in has really uh, been able to do for me, leveraging time and other people's efforts uh, training people, uh, helping people to grow, helping people to uh, make an income for themselves. And the more yeah. people you help, the more money you earn. Yeah. So it's a very, very, Robert Kiyosaki loves the concept yeah. of the industry that I'm in. And um, it works really, really well for, if you understand what you're doing. Right. And have right. the right expectations. Because a lot of people, it takes a lot of people a while before they really start seeing success. Yeah. And you have to be prepared for that, just like anything else in life. So once they come to the realization that, you know what, hard work really pays off. And if they stick with it and build and build and build, they'll be financially free for themselves and for their family for generations. Outstanding. I love that, man. I love that. Um, what does life look like for you three, five years from now? Three years from now, what does life look like for you? It looks like for me, uh, not only just maintaining, continuing to maintain proper health and proper nutrition, uh, but to bring awareness. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're hitting on half a century. I don't want to minimize this. You're like, you said you're 47, yeah. three years, you'll be 50. You're, you're hitting on yeah. half a century, my man. So like, that's right. That's a huge, huge, huge milestone. Right. Yeah. yeah. What does that look like? I'm yeah. really curious. What does that look like for you? Yeah. Well, I mean, seeing the grays is it's time to really pass on wisdom, right? Especially now. Yeah. yeah it's, it's helping other individuals uh, relating to their health understand it's really hard it's challenging people have a certain mindset and based on the foods that they eat um and the i would say the um the toxins that are in people's systems it causes them to have toxic thoughts that really hinders people from processing things up optimally the brain is supposed to function optimally a lot of people's brains are not functioning optimally they have very toxic thoughts and they have limiting ideas and it feels as though they can't accomplish certain things. So when it comes to making a, a shift, like changing your diet, because the doctor told you, you need to do something or else you're going to die, or you need to do something, or you're going to be on several different types of medications. And people have a hard time doing it until they get, the doctor says, you got six months to live. But why does it have to get to that stage? Right. So helping people really identify, don't let it get that far along the line. Right. Really help them figure out why they process the things the way that they do. And what is important for your health? Don't think about just yourself. Right. Think about your family. Think about the people that's going to have to take care of you if you get sick. Right. 
and not be so selfish minded. So this is what I want to help people really to identify. This coming out of selfishness and really start thinking about others right. and really help themselves to be able to be a proper resource for their family. Yeah. And yeah. to do what they have been called to do, right? Yeah. Um, the elderly people have such wisdom and knowledge to pass on to the next generation. Yeah. And, um, you know, just position yourself to be able to have the proper health and a proper function to mm -hmm. know exactly what you are supposed to be giving to the generation. Love it. Love it. Yeah, man. Uh, where do people find you? Where are you most active? Well, find me on Facebook, um, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn probably a lot better. I work a lot more on the LinkedIn profile than the Facebook profile, but um, yeah, they can find me on my website also. They can contact me through my website, avoidchronicillness.com also. There's a contact piece there for me. Okay. Um, but yeah. Instagram, shirt off, in the park, doing that, those yeah. workouts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll drop that one for you since you're not going to drop it yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. We're going to play a quick game. It's called uh, mm -hmm. Hands Down Lightning Round, okay? I ask you okay. three questions, and um, you tell me, you know, your bottom line about these three questions. If you don't want to respond to any of those questions, just say pass, and I'll move on to the next one. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so, city guy like you, Ivan Johnson, uh, Mr. Health Conscious, city life or suburban life? That's an interesting question. Um, city life has being, become very challenging right now. So, I've been kind of thinking about suburban life, but Time would tell. I'm not there yet, but my mind is kind of processing some things relating to a change potentially. Gotcha. Okay. So he's going to, that's TBD people to be determined. Yeah. <laughs> he, hasn't let it, he knows what he's going to do, but he's not letting it his own. He's still doing the work. It sounds like the research and you're like me, you like research the crap out of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, second question. Uh, you're super health conscious, man. I'm like, wow, I need to work on that on myself too. Like I'm conscious, but I'm not that self, I'm not that, um, uh, health conscious, uh, high intensity interval training mm -hmm. or, uh, that's the CrossFit. Oh, high, high intensity versus CrossFit. Yeah. Wow. That's a good one. Right now I'll say high intensity uh, interval training. That's what I do. Personally, I haven't, I haven't done the CrossFit. I haven't had access to the equipment to do CrossFit, mm -hmm. but um, I'll do that. And I believe it's a, for many people, uh, I would say it's an easier start. Jumping into CrossFit can be very challenging. You can hurt yourself if yeah. you're not ready. If you don't do the high interval training first right. and build yourself up and build up your core, doing CrossFit, you can, you can really uh, have a very short career in CrossFit. <laughs> short yeah, experience in CrossFit. It. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And prone to injury. Like those movements are crazy and the intensity of those movements are crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is the best one, uh, Mike Tyson or Roy Jones. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're, oh man. That one is very hard because I have such a, uh, very, very deep affection for both fighters. Uh, Tyson, as I said, when I was younger, I would say, I want to grow up to fight Tyson one day. I love Tyson and Roy Jones was somebody in which I used to, you know, me and have very similar fighting styles of fighters and Roy Jones. My friend was like, wow, that. He fights just like you, Drac. They used to call me Drac. So I don't know. Like it's like it's like seeing it's like seeing um it's like a father looking at both his sons fight, right? Oh, Who's the father wow. gonna go for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's gonna go for? Right. It's tough. You can't call it. Right. Can't call it. That sucks. Why'd you have to put it like know. that, man? Why'd you put it? Like <laughs> that? All right. So like Bones Jones, I don't know if you follow Bones Jones. I'm Yes, I do. John Jones, you know, yes. he's one of three, right? You know, his he's one of an amazing story, right? How, how, how are you going to have, what is it, two has, uh, was it two other brothers or three other brothers? Yeah, the NFL player. Yeah, two, two other brothers that are in the NFL. What are the odds? Yeah, and he's the baby, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah. he's the youngest. So he's in what the What are the odds? Yeah, it's crazy. And he's in the basement and, you know, his dad puts the three of them in the basement and they got to scrap it out. They got to fight each other. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's how he grew up, right? And you see the discipline, you see the mindset, you see um, his true potential, right? And he's still like growing. He's still growing. He's such a, I think uh, Joe Rogan says he's the best fighter in the UFC, hands down, in the heavyweight division. You know what I mean? So when you, when you said that, how are you going to pick, you know, against your two sons? I'm like, oh, well, dang, this is, he's not going <laughs> to answer that question. 
I'm going on Tyson though. I'm definitely bank because Tyson is a savage. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it's gonna be a great fight, definitely. Yes. Okay. Yes, and finally, for you, my man, Evan Johnson, man, I'm like, you don't understand. Like, I look for inspiration wherever I can find it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm always looking for inspiration, and you've definitely inspired me um, through your content, through this conversation. But I am curious, and I'm sure the curious the people are curious too. What is your bottom line? That reoccurring truth that no matter what setback you get faced with, you go back to this truth and it puts you right back on track to crush your goals. What is your bottom mm, line? That's really good. My bottom line is going to be my spiritual health, my spiritual well-being, first and foremost. I believe that the indication of someone's spiritual development, spiritual growth is tied to what you see them doing in their daily activities, daily routine, the things that they say, the things that they do. Um, how they respond in certain situations is a direct indication to spiritual growth. So I believe being spiritually strong, I me, mean, is through Jesus Christ, uh, identifying with him, him being my role model, him being my idol, everything that he did, everything that he taught, and try to follow uh, his way of life um, to the T as the best I possibly can is the foundation for my life. Whenever I fall off track, I look back to that example, and that brings you right back in proper alignment. And then everything else falls in play from there. So for me, first and foremost, is going to my relationship where Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior, and everything else is the, it stems from there. Everything else is birthed from there. It's going to be based on that. Amen. I'm just going to leave it there. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for taking the time, Ivan. Uh, you're very yes. insightful. Um, any last words for the people? No, nah, just really thanks for, I appreciate you having me on. And um, it's, been, it's been a long time, but, you know, when we first connected, I, I, I did have a feeling that we were going to uh, have some kind of a, a relationship that would be, you know, uh, a relationship would build and to really help each other and to really encourage each other and to really do business together in some capacity. I always knew that would be there. So it's good us connecting again. Perfect. Thanks for having me on your platform. And then I'm looking forward to another conversation. Yeah, definitely. Same here, man. It's like getting to know a whole new person. It's like this whole side yes. of you that I hadn't, I didn't even know. So thanks for taking the time, man, Yvonne. Um, you're brilliant. You're a motivator. You're a force. And you're a man of God. Thanks for sharing that. You know what I mean? Your faith and um, your bottom line. Uh, this was the Bottom Line Podcast with Yvonne Johnson today, uh, where we say what we mean and we mean what we say. Because at the core of everything that is, was, and forever will be, there will always be the bottom line.